Assalamu alaikum dear researchers and welcome to part 4 on of our lecture series on PLS SCMS part PLS 4 this is lecture 4 and structural model part 1 because in this lecture we are going to discuss the steps to analyze the structural model so these are the recommended steps to analyze the structural model by here at all and step 1 is to assess the structural model for collinearity step 2 is to assess the significance and relevance of structural model relationship this is the step where we find the path uh, coefficients and if they are significant or not and basically do our hypothesis testing. Then is step 3 which is very important for PLS SEM is to assess the model's explanatory power. Here we find R square statistics and F square. And then step 4 is to assess the model's predictive power which is very important if we see how much we generalize our model and uh, we use PLS predict for that. Uh, previously we used to uh, use Q square but now uh, PLS predict is more recommended step and step 5 is to compare how we can compare different models for modern fit and we are going to discuss the first three steps that is how to find multicollinearity, how to calculate path coefficient and significance value using bootstrapping and how to determine the model's explanatory power using R square values and F square values that is the effect size. So this was our theoretical model on which we were working before. What we can do is that we can hide these indicators. Right click, hide indicator, show indicator. Alt X to hide indicator, Alt C to show indicator. So we have so many options in uh, this right click as well. So I have hidden all the indicators and we are only see the latent construct right now. So to calculate or to see our collinearity, we go to PLS algorithm, open the report and on the left hand side we can see we have these collinearity statistics. So these collinearity statistics we can basically open outer list and here we can see collinearity between the indicators but we are interested to see the collinearity between the constructs that is that is our criteria number one the inner model collinearity and the benchmark is that our collinearity should be less than 3 or if we want to be a bit lenient so we have certain text which recommend it less than 5 and this is basically the V I F values. So step 2 is to assess the significance and relevance of the structural model relationship. This is done in PLS SCM by using the bootstrapping method. What happens in bootstrapping because bootstrapping is meant to test the significance values or generate the p-values uh, or the confidence intervals for uh, non-parametric statistics that is though the data in which the normality is not a requirement so it randomly draws with replacement samples uh, how many uh, boots uh, how many bootstraps we select for example if we select 10,000 so 10,000 times it will uh, draw the samples uh, from the original sample and calculate the parameters for example the PLS path coefficients and uh, then it will generate or reproduce the normal data and then generate the standard errors for p-values. So without going into details what we need to understand is that PLS calculates the significance values using the bootstrapping method. So how to do bootstrapping in PLS4 we go to calculate and here you will see the option for bootstrapping the recommended is 10,000 uh, but if you want to do it quick you can go as low as uh, 5,000, 3,000. Uh, the minimum criteria is that it should be equal to or greater than your exact sample size. So if the sample size is 700 it should be 700. So I am keeping it 3,000 for uh, fast results. Most important results you can see here and then percentile bootstrapping is the recommended. Previously bias corrected and accelerated was recommended. But uh, by 2022 uh, percentile, there is more emphasis on percentile bootstrap. If your hypothesis is uh, directional, you can go for one tail. If your hypothesis has no direction, you can go for two tail. Significance value is traditionally set at 0 0.05 for business research and social science research. But uh, for exploratory research, it can be as high as 0 0.1 and for some experiments or sensitive data or some established research it can be as low as 0 0.01 fixed seat we should set because every time bootstrapping uh, will occur uh, the results will be different so if we have random seat it will be different result but this time if we choose fixed seat and this is option in PLS4 
was not present in PLS 3 previously. I have clicked on open report and I am going to start calculations. So this is the report version because I have clicked on the open report. As you can see uh, over here we have uh, the p values and we have the coefficients. So this is the coefficient and these are the p values. So we want to see the results for the path coefficients. You click on the left hand side at the path coefficient over here and you will see a table where your results this first column is basically the beta value the path coefficient that we are interested to report and this is the p values that we are interested to report right and these are the uh, relationships like fear of terrorism psychological distress the p value is significant it's highly significant and the path coefficient is 0.2 so beta is 0.2 and p is 0 0.000 uh, negative effect effect on psychological distress the beta values uh, is a high 0.603 significant uh, for the last hypothesis positive effect and effect on psychological distress uh, are the beta values negative as expected but it is not significant you can also use the t values to interpret these results that they are corresponding t values which we can use uh, to report uh, for example a t value of 1.96 for a two tail text is equal to 0 0.05 p value so the table is present in the in the text uh, and we can always refer to the t values as well another thing that is often reported uh, to uh, for the significance of our relationship are the confidence intervals or how much we are confidence that our results are lying in this particular uh, uh, criteria that is 1% 99% since i had changed my criteria so I'm gonna do it again bootstrapping and do it 0 0.05 and then start calculations again and this time to you will see that we have 95% confidence interval over here and this confidence interval what is the criteria that our results are significant is very simple if your lower confidence interval and higher confidence interval are, are of the same sign or there is no zero value between them then we can say that the results corresponding to this confidence interval are significant. So as you have seen the p-value, uh, the first result and the second results are significant and the third is not significant. The same results we are getting in the confidence interval. And we are going to use confidence interval when we are going to report the results for indirect effect or mediation or the moderation as well. Step 3 is to assess the model's explanatory power said how much of our exogenous variables or our independent variables are explaining our dependent variables and what is the effect of uh, one individual independent variable on the dependent variable so first of all is the coefficient of determination which is basically calculated for every outcome variable or every dependent variable or every endogenous variable so r square ranges from 0 to 1 it changes with number of predictors so if you have more predictors in the model you would expect higher r square values and for lesser uh, predictors obviously it will decrease uh, the important thing is that it should be interpreted with the context and the existing literature uh, we should never understand this like if we have a r square value of 0 0.1 is is low because you will find some literatures uh, that r square value of 0 0.1 is also interpreted as a strong one and in, in some literature you will see that r square value of 0 0.5 0 0.6 are actually weaker if in that particular context you will find as high as 0 0.8 but sometimes a, a r square value very high can be considered as overfit which means that the model is very complex and this this is unnecessarily high so in that case we should try to trim down our model to make it more parsimonious basically we also interpret in this paper it as a percentage and in the percentage of variance that is explained by independent variables so you will get an r square value for every dependent variable similarly f square is calculated for every uh, independent variable uh, and this is basically uh, when we calculate r square with the including variable then exclude that variable divided by one minus r square included uh, but obviously we do not calculate it because smart square is provided for us uh, the thumbnail is that if f square value is 0 0.02 uh, lower than 0 0.02 is uh, negligible then greater than 0 0.02 and 0 0.015 is small then 
greater than 0.15 is medium and then greater than 0.35 is considered a large effect. The difference between f square and at path coefficient is that f square is basically uh, not dependent upon sample size whereas path coefficients and significance do changes if the sample size increases. Step 3 is to assess the model's explanatory power. Set how much of our exogenous variables or our independent variables are explaining our dependent variables and what is the effect of uh, one individual independent variable on the dependent variable. So first of all is the coefficient of determination which is basically calculated for every outcome variable or every dependent variable or every endogenous variable. So R square ranges from 0 to 1. It changes with number of predictors. So if you have more predictors in the model, you would expect higher R square values and for lesser uh, predictors, obviously it will decrease. Uh, the important thing is that it should be interpreted with the context and the existing literature. Uh, we should never understand this like if we have a R square value of 0 0.1, is this low? Because you will find some literatures uh, that R square value of 0 0.1 is also interpreted as a strong one. And in, in some literature, you will see that R square value of 0 0.5, 0 0.6 are actually weaker. If in that particular context, you will find as high as 0 0.8. But sometimes the uh, uh, R square value very high can be considered as overfit, which means that the model is very complex and this, this is unnecessarily high. So in that case, we should try to trim down our model to make it more parsimonious. Basically, we also interpret in this as paper it as a percentage and in the percentage of variance that is explained by independent variables. So you will get an R square value for every dependent variable. Similarly, F square is calculated for every uh, independent variable uh, and this is basically uh, when we calculate R square with the including variable then exclude that variable divided by 1 minus R square included. Uh, but obviously we do not calculate it because smart square is provided for us. Uh, the thumbnail is that if F square value is 0 0.02, uh, lower than 0 0.02 is uh, negligible, then greater than 0 0.02 and 0 0.015 is small, then greater than 0.15 is medium and then greater than 0.35 is considered a large effect. The difference between F square and at path coefficient is that F square is basically uh, not dependent upon sample size whereas path coefficients and significance do changes if the sample size increases. So where do we find this uh, R square value and F square value in smart PLS4? We will not find it in bootstrapping. What we need to do is to open the report of or if we have not saved it, we have to do it again of PLS SCM, start calculation, open the report and on left hand side in quality criteria, you will see R square and F square values. So we are going to first check the R square value. Since we have one uh, dv uh, or endogenous variable and this R square value is 0 0.504, uh, if we adjust it for number of parameters, it is 0 0.495. So what we can say is that uh, basically uh, all the all of the independent variables explains 49.1% variance in psychological distress. So this is how we can interpret the R square value. Similarly, you will find the F square values and you can see that F square values uh, obviously for positive effect as we have already seen the path coefficient was insignificant so it's very low. For negative effect it is very high uh, in fact as a criteria of high we can also say very high and this is moderate. So uh, like it's not moderate it's actually low because it's less than 0.15. So if we see the criteria again we see that 0.15 uh, greater than is medium, less than 0.15 and greater than 0.02 is small. So here we can see that it is small and this one is high. Uh, 